Hello there, it's Alana Tucky, the lead faculty for Math 131. In this video, I'm going to discuss scientific notation and how it works with the calculator in particular. So I want to discuss, first of all, how to type number in scientific notation. So when you look at your calculator, and let me make this a little bit smaller so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, when you look at the calculator, you might be thinking, well, where's scientific notation? And the answer is, it's in a lot of places. I mean, you could type 6.4 times 10 to the negative 3. I mean, that's scientific notation. And it's longhand, but it gets it done, right? But the calculator has a faster way to do it because, of course, the people that make calculators um, realize that the people that use them need to use scientific notation a lot more simply than that. So what they do is they made this other quick hand way to get to it, and that's the block letter E, E standing for exponent. Now, you might be thinking, well, where is that? There are actually a lot of E's on your calculator, and you don't want to get them confused with each other. There's this one right here above the sign button. That's actually a, an alphabetical E. It's not a mathematical operator. So it's for if you want to type messages to yourself like, um, let me see. Where's H? Oh, there it is. H, E, um, L somewhere here. L, L, O. See? It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't know what to do. It, it means nothing, right? It's a letter. Now you see how big that E is. See how it kind of takes up the full line? That's the capital letter E. Now that's not to be confused with, all right, so that was above the sign button. If you book, look above the LN button right here um, in blue, if, you, if I hit second there, there's like a little lowercase e. And if I hit one, you can see it's this number 2.718, blah, blah, blah. And that's actually the same number letter e that's above your division symbol. See that? So if I hit blue, second, and then division, it's the same little lowercase e, and it's 2.718. 2.718 is something we're going to learn about later in chapter 4 and 5, but it's a number that goes on forever. It's like pi. Um, it's called Euler's number. Euler is the name of the guy that um, did a lot of work with this number. His name was spelled E-U-L-E-R. So a lot of people think that the, name, the number was named after him. But for whatever reason, it's given a little letter e. Um, you use it a lot in like compound interest problems for business class and stuff like that. So the thing is, we, the people that designed the calculator, they were like, well, we don't want to get confused with the block letter E, and we don't want to get confused with Euler's number, which is above the division symbol and above the LN button. So we need a way to get people to do the times 10 to the, but not get confused. And then the other issue is that computer programmers since, you know, the 1950s and 60s have been doing t scientific notation with EXP, EXP standing for exponent or exponentiation. So they wanted to stick with the E because that's the way it was, but they wanted it to be differentiated. So where is it? Well, it's above the comma button. You see above the comma, it has this little double E thing, block letter E. So if I type 6.4, oh, let me clear that. Okay, 6.4, second, comma. Now, the comma has double E's, right? You can see two E's in there, but only one E shows up. And that's because the only reason they put two E's in there is just to get you to understand that it's not the same thing as the green letter E above your sign button. That's it. So it's going to come out as like a little lowercase block letter E. Now, notice it's smaller than the E in hello, right? And that's to differentiate to you that this is scientific notation. And then I want negative 3, not minus 3, negative 3. Enter. And then I get 0 .0064. So that's the fast way to get scientific notation. It's the little e that's above your comma button. And not supposed to be the lowercase e, which is a different number altogether, but the two double e right there, which stands for exp exponentiation exponent. Now, now that we know how to do it, I want to run into a couple other problems for you. I want you to notice that if I go too big, and I gave the example of 10 here, so if I do block letter E, 10, it just gives me back scientific notation. It's too many digits. The calculator won't do anything, here I'll do another one, um, that is past uh, 10 digits in the positive direction. So if I hit like 11, it won't do it. But if I do it again, and then do 9, 0, 9. There you go. 
So it'll do this. And the reason is because this is 10 decimal places altogether because you have the three and then the nine decimal places that you added in with scientific notation that gives you 10 total. The calculator won't display more than 10 decimal places. Oh, and in case you're wondering how I got that to come back up so easily, I hit um, second, enter. See how it says above there, entry? See right there in blue? It means it'll take the last thing you entered and then you could do it again, second, enter. There's the last one I entered, and then the second, enter. And it'll cycle through several, I think up to 10 of your last entries. So last one I did was 6.4 E10. Let me do 6.4 E9 just so you can see. Ooh, that's 19, that's not good. There we go, E9. Cool. Okay, so it'll do this 10 decimal places. It will not do anything more than that. And there's nothing magical about 6.4. That's just the number I happen to pick. All right, so that's how far it will go in the positive direction. Up to 9 is fine, but 10 and beyond won't do it. It'll just give you scientific notation back. All right, then what about the other direction? So if you do 6.4 e negative 3, which we already did, no troubles. But if I do it again, second enter, and I put in a 4 here, nope, doesn't like that, right? So anything lower than negative 4, so negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, it won't do it. It'll just give you back the scientific notation for it. Um, there are ways around this, of course, but that's, you know, the basics. All right, so then I wanted to show you a couple other things, which I know are in the lecture notes, but I just wanted to, to bring them up again. So let me pause you and bring back an equation. Hold on. There we go. So I, I've re-entered that equation. Um, that particular one I was working with is actually 5 to the x. And so you can see, you know, you're doing okay for a while, right? So the calculator's handling the numbers okay. You know, 5 to the 4 is 625. 5 to the 5 is this, and so on. And then once you hit 9, do you see what happens? So over on the right-hand side, this column is limited to six decimal places, right? So for 8, it can show that because it's got 390,625, no troubles. And then when you get down to 9, it's actually too large a number. It's bigger than six decimal places. If you move the cursor over, you can actually see what number it is. You can see it's 1953125, right? which is what, 1,953,125. But the calculator can't write all those decimal places because it needs to keep this limited to only six digits, right? So as you scroll down, you can see from this point on, basically, it's going to be these huge, huge decimals, right? Something really big, like this one is six, and then one, and then zero, 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 right? And then if you go over to it, you can actually see all the other decimal places. But when you're just looking at it over here with the, the cursor on the 14, it just looks like it's going to be 6 and then 1 and then lots of zeros after it. By the way, this actually works the same as the other direction. Hold on. i got to get up to it. Luckily with exponentials, it doesn't take long. You'll get really small numbers really quickly. Yeah, see? Look. So the other direction, you end up in these negative values, right, which are really small and then right, seven, so you have like, I don't know, point zero 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 three, right? So with a lot of exponential functions, you can get really big and really small numbers. And then the table, of course, doesn't really show you them. If you scroll over to them with the arrow, you can see a little bit more. But with these ones, because they're so little, the calculator kind of gives up after a few decimal places and then just says e to the negative 11, right? Which is not e to the negative 11, I'm sorry. It's times 10 to the negative 11. It's their way of writing that. All right, so let me show you another thing. And of course, this particular problem was worked out in the lecture notes, or will be. But let me go back. If I did 1 divided by, and I picked a really big number, oops, 649, uh, 740, I think. 740. You can see that that's this really small number, right? So you would move the decimal six places to the left. So it's point zero 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 one five three nine zero seven seven, right? So it's giving you scientific notation. And again, I'll write that out for you in um, the lecture note videos when we get there.
And the last but not least, I wanted to show you one other key thing, which is how the calculator can mess up. Oh, by the way, just in case you're wondering what I'm doing, I actually wanted both equations in here just because this is the way I was working. So it only graphs or works a table for the ones that I have darkened. So up until now, I only had the 5 to the x darkened. That's why the table was only made for 5 to the x. If I move over to the equal sign, see that how it's blinking? And I press enter. Now it's dark, so it's turned on. And then I'll press enter, and that'll turn that one off. So they're both still stored there. But when I go to the table, I'm only going to see y1 now. Whereas I used to see y2. Remember, there were all those e negative whatevers right here. We don't have that anymore. All right, let me go to the graph for a second. And I'm going to finagle with the calculator a second. This is something you're actually going to learn in a later chapter. So don't worry about this. Matter of fact, I'm going to just do it and pause you. So hold on. Actually, I thought even though this isn't something we learn until later, you might as well learn it now. Why not? Never too late to learn, right? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, I don't know if you noticed, but this graph has a maximum. See it right there? It's like got a little peak at the top. So I'm going to hit second trace button, which really gets me to that calculate. So I want to do a graph calculation. We've already done intersect in chapter three, if you've watched those videos already. So I'm going to do number four, which is the maximum. And it's asking me, where's, uh, I want to get this cursor to the left of that maximum. So see the blinking cursor? As long as he's to the left of the maximum, I can press enter. And hopefully this will work out okay. And then, um, and it'll mess up again. All right, then the right. So I'm going to take the blinky cursor and I move him over here so that he's to the right of that maximum. So I'm going to press enter. And then now it's asking me for a guess and I'm just going to press enter. Ah, it didn't make the same mistake as it did before, but that's okay. It made its own mistake. So um, you can see the mistake it made in the notes where it did 2.00001 because it's not that bright of a calculator. And then here it's saying negative 8.7 E negative 14. Right. Okay. So think about what that looks like. Negative 8.7 E negative 14 is 0 0.1234567891012. In other words, it's basically zero, right? Your calculator is very smart, but not very wise, right? It knows how to run a, uh, an algorithm like this, but it doesn't always come up with good answers. So you would have to know yourself that that's not really negative 8.7 E negative 14. That's zero, right? That's zero. This graph is hitting at zero. If you put negative two into that function, which by the way, it's, it's a function we learn in a later chapter, but if you put negative two in there, you're going to get zero and zero squared is zero, right? So you have to be smarter than your calculators. All right. All right. So I will see you here for more videos later.